Now we will look at how to find the bands off power index or the BPI for a particular weighted voting system. Now uh, the it's, it's done in a number of steps. The first step is to make a list of all the winning coalitions. Step two, you determine the critical players. Step three, count the total number of times a player is critical. We use a symbol B for that. After that, you count the total number of times all players are critical. We use a symbol T. And the last step is to find the BPI, which is the fraction or percentage found by taking B divided by T. So we're going to start here with this particular weighted voting system. It has a quota of 12. There are four, four players in this weighted voting system. So the first thing we're going to do is make a list of all the winning coalitions. So first what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look and see if there's any one player winning coalitions. Does anybody have enough votes to pass a motion by themselves? And nobody has 12 or more, so there are no winning coalitions. So what I like to do is I like to set up a table. Um, and then the next thing I would do is, are there any two player winning coalitions? And yes, I can say that player one and player two, if they combine their forces and their votes, they would have 13 votes. That would be enough to pass a motion. So um, I'm going to set up a, a table. And these are all the two player winning coalitions. I'm leaving a column for CPs. Those are my critical players. And then three player winning coalitions, CPs for critical players. And then lastly, four player winning coalitions and a column for CPs. Okay, so I'm going to write down all of the two player winning coalitions. The first two I'm going to look at would be player one, player two and 8 plus 5 is enough to pass a motion. That would be 13. So I'm going to write uh, P1 comma P2. I'm going to uh, leave this column blank for right now. I'm going to see if there's any other two player winning coalition. So I'm going to stick with player 1. I went player 1, player 2 here. Now I'm going to look at player 1, player 3. Is that enough votes to pass a motion? Well 8 plus 3 is 11. That's not enough. So when, once you find a, a, a coalition that is not a winning coalition, you know that you have found all of the two-player winning coalitions. So the next thing I'm going to jump to is three-player winning coalitions. I'm going to start with the first just three players, player one, player two, player three. Would that be winning? Five, eight plus five plus three. That would be, yes, that's more than 12. So player one, player two, player three. That would be a winning coalition. I'm going to stick with player one and player two and go player one, player two, player four. Would that be a winning coalition? And yes, it would be. So player one, player two, player four. If there are more players in this weighted voting system, I would go player one, player two, player five, and then player one, player two, player six. But player five and player six do not exist. Therefore, I have exhausted all of the winning coalitions with player one and player two together. So now I have to split that up. I'm going to go with player one, player three. Go player one, player three, player four, and see if that is a winning coalition. Player one, player three, player four, that's 11, 12. Yes, 12 is enough to pass a motion. So player one, player three, player four is a winning coalition. Then I would go player one, player three, player five, but there is no player five. So I'm done with player one, player three together. Uh, the next thing I would do is go player one, player four, but there's not another third player. There's no player five. So now I've exhausted all of the winning coalitions that player one is a part of. I would then move to player two, player three, player four. And is that a winning coalition? Five plus three plus one is nine. That's not enough. So at this point, we have all of the winning coalitions listed. The next thing we're going to do is just write all of the four player winning coalitions. Okay, so we have made a list of all the winning coalitions. The next thing uh, that we need to do is determine the critical players. 
Now, how we determine if a critical is pl uh, a player is critical or not, we go through and check each of the players in each one of the winning coalitions. So here, I'm going to start with my two-player winning coalition. Player one has eight, and player two has five. Now, a, a player is critical if they were to uh, leave the uh, the winning coalition. Would there be enough votes? for that uh, uh, winning coalition to pass a motion. And in this example, if player one were to leave, their eight votes were to leave this two-player winning coalition, there would not be enough remaining votes. There would only be five, and five is not enough to pass. Therefore, that means that player one is critical. Okay, then we check player two. If we were, uh, if player two's five votes were to leave this winning coalition, would there be enough votes to pass? And no, there would only be eight. You need 12. So that means that player two would be critical. Now, when you look on the other My Math Lab videos that deal with the bands off power index, or you're looking through the book, how they like to identify the critical players is by underlining the um, players in a particular winning coalition. So that's how the book, that's how my math lab uh, videos uh, represent critical players. I like to make a, a, a separate column just so it's very, very clear who the critical players are. Because then when we get later in the process, I don't want to miscount a particular number of times a player is critical. And therefore, I get the whole problem wrong. I have to do it all over. So this is just kind of my way of doing this so I don't make any little errors. So I'm going to go on to the next three player winning coalition. Player one, player two, player three. Now player one has eight votes, player five, player two has five votes, and player three has three votes. So if I were to cover up player one, would there be enough votes to pass without player one? And there are not there there's not enough votes. So that means that player one is a critical player in this winning coalition. Uh, if I were to cover up player two's five votes, are there enough votes to pass? Eight plus three is 11. You need 12. That's not enough. So that means that in this winning coalition, player two is also a critical player. Uh, okay, let's check player three. If I were to cover up player three's three votes, are there enough votes to pass? Eight plus five is 13. 13 is enough to pass. That Therefore, player three is not a critical player in this weighted voting, um, this winning uh, coalition. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. Player one, player two, player four. That would be player one has eight, player two has five, and player four has one. So I'm going to cover up player one's eight votes. Five plus one is six, not enough. That means player one is critical. Uh, cover up player two's five votes. Eight plus one is nine, not enough. You need 12, so that means player two is critical. Cover up player four's one vote. 8 plus 5 is 13. Uh, they can pass a motion without player 4. Therefore, player 4 is not a critical player. OK, we're going to move on to this last one in the three-player winning coalitions. Player 1, player 3, player 4. That is 8, 3, and 1. OK, if I'm going to cover up player 1's 8 votes, are there enough votes to pass? Nope. So player 1 is critical. If I cover up player three, are there enough votes to pass? Eight plus one is nine, not enough, you need 12. Therefore, player three is critical. If I cover up player four's one vote, are there enough votes to pass? Eight plus three is 11, that's not enough to pass, you need 12. So therefore, player four is critical as well. Okay, on to the last winning coalition. It's the four player winning coalition. Eight, five, Three, one. So if I cover up player one's eight votes, are there enough votes to pass? Five plus three plus one is nine. That's not enough. You need 12. So player one is a critical player. If I cover up player five's, player two's five votes, we got eight plus three plus one, which is 12. So that's enough to pass. Therefore, player two is not a critical player. If I cover up player three's three votes, I got eight plus five plus one, that's uh, 13, 14. That's enough to pass without player three, so player three is not critical. And lastly, if I cover up player four's one vote, we have the remaining votes is eight plus five is 13 plus three, 16. That's enough to pass without player four, so player four is not critical. Okay, we've determined all of the critical players. Now we just need to move on to step three. You count up the total number of times a player is critical. And we use this symbol B. 
And when we're talking about the number of times player 1's critical, we have a little subscript 1 right there, so b sub 1. So how many times has player 1 been critical? We just count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So b1 equals 5. And then we just count up the number of times player 2 has been critical. I'm going to move this up. And player 2 has been critical 1, 2, 3 times. And then we count up the number of times player 3 has been critical once. And the number of times player 4 has been critical, which is once. After we uh, calculate all the, the number of times each player is critical, then what we need to do is find the total number of times all players are critical. So we just find the total, and we just add up all of these, and that's what our t is. And 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1, that actually equals 10. So now we are ready to find the BPI, which is the fraction or percentage which is found by taking the number of times each player is critical and dividing it by the total. And they use this beta symbol like this. And that, it, it, this is talking about the number of, the amount of power that player 1 has, that beta 1. So we're just going to say uh, beta 1 is uh, the amount of power player 1 has is the number of times player 1 has been critical over the total number of times. Well, player 1's been critical 5 times. And the total is 10, which is 50%. So that means in this weighted voting system, player 1 has 50% of the power. Okay, let's figure out how much power uh, player 2 has. So beta 2 is going to be B2, the amount of times player 2 has been critical over the total, which would be player 2 has been whoops, critical uh, 3 times over the total, which is 10 which equals 30%. And then we're going to look at um, the amount of power that uh, player 3 has, which is the amount of times player 3 has been critical over the total. And player 3 has been critical one time over the total, which is 10%. And then lastly, the amount of power player 4 has is the amount of times player 4 is critical over the total. Player 4 has been critical one time over the total, which is 10%. So now we just need to write our final answer. Uh, player 1, the amount of power player 1 has is 50%. The amount of power that player 2 has is 30%. Player 3 and player 4 have the same amount of power, which is 10%. And that is our final answer. And it's kind of interesting. If we look back here at the weighted voting system, you know, uh, we, uh, the player one with a weight of eight has 50% 50, 50 of the power. Uh, player two has a weight of five, and they have 30% of the power. And even though player three and play, player four have different amounts of weight, player three has a weight of three, and player four has a weight of four, they both have 10% of the power in this weighted voting system.